action. You're silly. <laughs> you say <laughs> Language. Its roots run so deep within our biology that when speech is not available, we use our hands, and language blooms and flourishes in vastly different and colorful forms. Sadly, these roots can be permanently severed by stroke or trauma to the brain's language center. But Alyssa Newport, armed with decades of breakthrough discoveries in language development, is determined to help victims of trauma recover lost language ability and regain their freedom of expression. Languages are really interesting because they're very specifically human. And this is precisely what makes the subject difficult to study. We don't run experiments where we put babies in the lab until they're a certain age and then expose them to languages when we'd like to see if it's still possible to learn languages. Newport spent her first years at UPenn devising alternative methods of researching language acquisition. However, her big breakthrough would come much later, almost by accident. When I first met my husband, who's deaf, we started talking about which of the deaf people that we knew also had deaf parents and which of them had hearing parents. But one of the things I discovered was that I could always pick out who had deaf parents. I could watch the movements that they used and the fluency of their signing and without understanding what they were saying, I could identify who had deaf parents. And so at some point it dawned on me that this game we were playing was about age of acquisition. Newport was on to something big. The guessing game gave Newport a profound insight. Deaf children born to deaf parents seemed to sign more fluently because they were exposed to sign language at an early age. On the other hand, deaf children born to hearing parents signed less proficiently because hearing parents rarely know how to sign before having their first deaf child. Their children are effectively without early language exposure. Newport had found a natural, ethically sound method of studying language acquisition. She would examine the signing proficiency of deaf adults who learn to sign at various stages of life. At the University of Illinois, Newport devised a clever research study. It involved a seriously long road trip in a borrowed Winnebago. We went around Philadelphia recruiting people in the deaf community who had started the Pennsylvania School for the Deaf and learned to sign in the dorms, but at different ages. And we brought them into the Winnebago and had them sign for us. And then we analyzed all those data to look at the effects of age of acquisition. Newport study would produce charts of landmark data correlating specific ages of language acquisition with specific levels of language proficiency. It was the first of its kind. And the later and later you learn to sign, the weaker control, the less consistent control you have over the most complicated aspects of the language. And that age effect lasts for a long time, forever. Newport would expand upon this breakthrough throughout her career and develop an expansive body of work that strongly suggests the biology of the child brain and language acquisition are deeply intertwined. So deeply, in fact, that when the language center of the child brain suffers damage, as in this case of prenatal stroke, the language center will migrate to the opposite brain hemisphere and develop normally. This doesn't happen in the adult brain. The brain of a child is somehow biologically more plastic. Imagine a future where doctors help stroke victims recover language ability by returning the adult brain to its infantile state where language is more easily learned. This is Newport's ultimate goal. Remarkably, Newport and a team of neuroscientists at Georgetown University are making progress in this area. I've always cared about having a dual aspect to the research that I do, having a basic science aspect and also having some meaningful impact on people's lives. Though there's much more work to be done, because of Alyssa Newport's invaluable contributions to our understanding of human language development, we may one day be able to give a voice back to those who've lost it. That's a wrap.